unfortunate, but that's why they are who they are. And when they can run the ball and then they can play action pass, they can roll down the field. Again, that, that's, the, that's one of the better offenses I've ever coached against just because they were ev they're everywhere. They make you cover the entire field with first-round draft picks everywhere. And uh, it wasn't good enough tonight. But the standard is to stop it. The standard is to make sure that they don't score. And uh, we did that in the first half. Uh, we didn't do that well in the second half. All right, Patrick Royce. Um, if you if you had the 14 and a half, I think you feel good today. If uh, if you made a uh, write that down bet with these guys at 13 and a half, you don't. Yes. Last uh, night. That was the number was 13 and a half. Did it get the 14 and a half? I saw came? someone on Twitter got it at 14 and a half. I don't know what sports book. Early, but. early. Well, I think some guys you can buy an extra half point if you want to, or you can buy so you can buy, you know, if you. If you change the odds on your win, you could you can buy a half point. I think it was officially fourteen, but uh, I was trying to look it up before we got on here. I couldn't. But uh, the eighty-four to thirteen game uh, in against Nebraska, uh, you know, when Nebraska had seven hundred ninety yards and had the ball for twenty-two minutes or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but uh, last night, seventy-one, fifty-six, seventy, and sixty-one yard touchdowns. Wow! I'm wondering if. Any time and the, this porous history of this franchise has uh, have you had uh, four touchdowns of fifty six or longer against you? Uh, you know what? Uh, you know what? PGA is going to regret when the uh, when the Gus Johnson tape is played for uh, Ryan Day when he's watching the game and all that stuff about. PJ is going to make them coach all night. He's going to make them coach all <laughs> night. He's going to put the pressure on the kid quarterback and he's going to make them coach. Yeah. So uh, this is a guy who just got done coaching against Nick Saban in the national championship game. But now PJ is going to give him a coaching lesson, make him coach all night. Uh, I had heard from a very secondhand source that, Ryan Day had already decided he didn't like him, so uh, I don't know. The Gophers don't have to go down there next year, do they? I don't. I don't. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. They no. Have to check. That would. Uh, that would be. But they, uh, you know, the big thing for them right now is if uh, if uh, Mohammed hurt himself, they're in big trouble. If, uh, the, that's an Achilles. If, that's if, if right. That's, I mean, if that's an Achilles, then some popped. Uh, that kid is, he is a warrior, man. That kid is tough. And uh, he can make two in the six uh, quite often. And uh, you know what? The dumbest play they, well, they did a few dumb things today. But the, when they were going down the field that very first time, banging them between the guards, you know, banging them between the tackles. And then they decided to run horizontal on that first down. They ended up having, you know, what, what are you doing? What yeah. are you, you know, because it's Ohio State. Defense isn't good, but they're fast. You know they have fast guys, so make them tackle you behind these, behind these five six monsters you have up front. Uh, don't you know? Don't get cute. I'm not. Uh, I'm not impressed with this Sanford as an offensive coordinator. I didn't like him that well last year, and I'm not so sure. What's surprising, Pat, too, is, is that to go through the amount of plays that you went through for the Buckeyes touchdowns. This game was fun and close. Like, if, if I told you the Buckeyes are going to score from 71, 38, 56, 70, and 61, what's the score going to be? You'd say, yeah. oh, they got they gave them an extra few touchdowns. It was 56 to 3 or 56 to 14. It's, it's actually surprising the game was entertaining and close, given that fact. Well, here's the deal. Uh, to me, they, they, they were raving about Stroud in the second half, Gus and this other guy, whoever it is. But he didn't have to make a, a good throw. He didn't have to make a above average throw for any of those touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Two of them were little swing passes, and the other one, yeah. the guy was running wide open by eight yards. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was it was not like he came out and lit it up in the second half. There was he had no. He looked very shaky the first half, uh, and they obviously played a little better defense. But I think Ohio State has got serious defensive problems. They're not physical. They're not, you know, they're not tough. They're, they're they don't have any linebackers. They're all, you know, they're linebackers. They lost four linebackers to the draft, I believe. And uh, their, their, their top four linebackers are gone. The kid from Southern Cal that they tried to get in as a transfer hasn't been declared eligible. 
So you're dealing with that. That's not a great defense. So Ohio State and uh, the Gophers showed that at times. Obviously, I thought Morgan looked real good, except he got stripped, but held the ball. Yeah, little cousins hold the ball on, <laughs> on that on that strip. Careful, sack. you don't want the you don't want the pro cousins mob coming after you here, Pat. <laughs> Choose yes, your he, words wisely. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah, no, he does. <laughs> But beyond that, I thought I thought Morgan was good, you know. It's... Yeah, but like he was good. But two two things: that strip sack, dude. You're a senior, you know. That it was. I, I think Ben Gessling had the stopwatch on it. It was like three seconds. Yes. You got to get rid of the ball or feel the pressure. And then the other thing too is, you know, you mentioned Ohio State's defense. I'm pretty sure they have really young cornerbacks. If oh, I remember yeah. some of the chatter last night, and you've got a senior quarter. I get that. I get that Rashad Bateman's gone and Ottman Bell is injured, and so you know you don't have the same wide receivers you did a couple years ago. But it just—I thought they should have thrown the ball more aggressively in certain spots. I thought they could have been more aggressive at the end of the first half when they're running the ball and letting clock run with 40, 50 seconds. Um, and then when they had a first and 15 after the penalty on the edge of field goal range, down by 10 in the second half, they run the ball three times. It's like I get that you're having some success running the ball. Uh, but at some point, maybe some play action over the top when you're past the 50 instead of playing for a field goal down 10 to a team you can't stop. So I, they kind of they kind of had this game, if not for a couple of those self-inflicted I, I was, things. I was a little amazed and, uh, when he called timeout in the uh, second and the fourth quarter to uh, on third and whatever it was, and then they ran this third string running back for four yards and kicked the field goal. I mean, yeah. what, what was the what was the object of that? I'll say one thing, though. He wasn't calling those timeouts at the end like he did against Ferentz to get the touchdown. Uh, I didn't. Th- I think they still had a timeout left or two, right, at the yes. end, and they let the game run yep. out. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do anything to <laughs> irritate this guy in case they're playing them again because this, this Gopher team is – I mean, Chip had a good column about, you know, this. the Gophers next year aren't going to be as good as they are this year because they – you know they're they're old now, and they have all these these pretty good players, and uh, you know, and Ohio State's going to be better uh, because they're young. So uh, I, when it, whenever they run into each other again, I don't think he wants Ryan Day to be resentful. <laughs> the the remarkable thing too is because it's hard to believe, but offensively, when it comes to philosophy, Zim and PJ have a lot in common. They're two polar opposite human beings, but they actually have a lot in common when it comes to what they believe an offense should be. Ball control, pound the ball, run at weird times. It's very much alike. Well, yeah, plus I don't, PJ, you know, he's got no choice with this collection. This is not a good D. This is a subpar defense you know there he doesn't have great defensive players he in this in this case the longer you got the ball the better off you are because uh, they're not very they were terrible defensively last year and it was hard to tell because uh you're playing against guys who are so fast uh but uh that i, I don't they're going to be better defensively but i don't think they're going to be very good their their corners don't know what they're doing either how about the ohio state corners though you mentioned them phil these guys had managed to defend a pass because somebody dropped them or they got by, away with grabbing a shirt or something, and they'd dance around like they were just made an NFL Super Bowl winning play. <laughs> they need Woody Hayes to grab them by the face mask and say, make a play, you idiots. That's what That's you're right. supposed to do. You know, That's what like, you did you did you see Trent, Trent Dilford did that to one of his high yeah. school players and went went viral this week. Yeah. I oh, guess yeah. that was uh remember yeah, the, the old punter Phil Dawson? Yeah, back with the that was Phil Dawson's son, I guess that he uh, oh. that he sat down. Where's Trent coaching? Some Christian school? Some ac- some academy? Yeah. He does a okay. lot. I don't know what he's exactly doing, but I loved him. He's one of my all time favorite guests. So, how did he run out of a, what? What happened with him and ESPN? He was so damn good. I, I don't. I couldn't figure yeah. out what happened. I don't know. I think I, actually, to one point. Yeah, he was part of like they had a they've had like three mass layoff rounds. I yeah. think he was part of the first one. Um, hey, he did, he did explain football to you, that's for sure. Back to the Gophers real quick. Did you guys get the feeling, okay, they like they had the lead in the second half, it's Ohio State, and they've got this massive offensive line that, okay, they're going to lose this game, but they're going to go on a run here and win a bunch of games and maybe have a chance to beat Wisconsin's Iowa's, or do you just feel like this is going to be a 500 Gophers team that can't really play defense? What, what's your takeaway now that the game's over? 
I think that uh, they're going to win a bunch of games because, uh, you know, you got to think, even though Bielema is probably going to get Illinois going a little bit, I think he will because I, I think he's a better coach than people give him credit for. Uh, but the, the Purdue is terrible. Nebraska is terrible. Uh, in the West, they're going to win some games. They'll be eight and four minimum, I think. Eight and four minimum. And that, that's so they're going to win eight of their next 11, I think. They might lose at Colorado. And then they might lose a couple in the Northwestern's way, 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 way down too. So uh, they North West, Northwestern lost its whole team, and they're not they're not like a reload program. So yeah, they're gonna win. They're gonna win some games. Now Eight. not having the running backs is gonna make a difference. That's for sure. If he if he popped that thing, I didn't see anything from Potts or Wiley or whoever the hell else they had out there. Is uh, Williams who's been around for a while? Bryce Williams is it? I didn't see yeah. anything that's going to make them uh, think they still have Ibrahim. Uh, that's that's for sure. So that'll that'll hurt them. But I I think I think you might have saw the best they got last night, but uh, for three quarters. But uh, I I think they're going to win some games because I don't think the West is any good. They could get Scott Frost fired. They could get Har. They don't play Michigan this year, so they they could get Harbaugh fired too. But. We could we could actually see kind of a mass exodus of. I think this is probably Harbaugh's last year at Michigan. Scott Frost probably his last year at Nebraska. There's thoughts that uh, Northwestern coach could Go that the the, that the Bears or somebody. There's been interest. Northwestern in just built in this. Taj Mahal down on uh, down on Lake Michigan. Did you see that practice field and everything yeah. they got? That's that's some valuable property they built for Fitzgerald. I I don't know. I he strikes me as a that that would be a big mistake for him to go to the NFL. He strikes me as a college guy. I had this thought though yesterday. Zim gets fired. The little guy's frustrated at the U. Wow! He's, uh, the little guy's frustrated. At the wow! Year. He fits the profile of what the next coach is going to be. Wow! It's the forty-year-old super salesman. <laughs> I'm, now maybe they think that would irritate Gopher fans too much, but they don't really care because they had their own base. And he'd guaranteed if he gets offered a decent NFL job, he'll take it. That would be the worst hire in the league since Holtz got hired in, I think, 76 by the Jets. Well, we don't know that. We don't He'd know that. A, oh it's going to be it's gonna be someone like that, like that. Maybe not as far over the top. Yeah, it won't be someone it, that far over gonna the top. It's going to be someone uh, like that. Yeah, it's going to well, be. Well, we might end up with an NFL job. It's a guy at Ohio State, right? That guy's – this is year, what, three or four? He's a young, real football coach, not full of BS and uh, – I'm sure positive messages and everything they, that the next Zim's replacement is going to be a guy like listen. Zim's also, replacement might have been on the field last night. I think <laughs> we're I think we're still trying to find the next McVay, which is not because Fleck is so far gone. I just I don't think that works in college. <laughs> at Fleck all. also and I'm listen. I am still I am still uh, I'm in the boat that is being rowed by PJ Fleck still at this point. But as great as he is at generating attention and marketing and he's done a good job recruiting you look at some of the recruiting rankings i mean he's getting more four-star guys he's 38th every year which is better it's, it's, than 40 yeah. yeah yep and he, so he's he's doing a good job recruiting but he is awful at clock and game management sometimes <laughs> and mike zimmer is not great at some of that no. stuff either and so if i'm going to move off mike zimmer i want to know that I want to know that my coach isn't going to burn timeouts with you know senselessly in the first quarter every time I will say the uh, the fourth and one, if they had won that game, would have been legend. That yes, been, oh, yeah. that and that's a great call. Like that's yeah. that's a great aggressive I, call. I was, I was first. I was thinking, what is he doing? Then I was saying, yeah, you're going to get this yard with this kid. You're yeah, you're going to get this yard, and if you punt right there, this game's over. Yep, because they're going to come back, and it's going to be seventeen. Yes, and you can't yeah. go toe to toe and just play a normal football. Like you have to do three things like that. To beat Ohio course, State and then not course, strip sack fumble. Of course, the running back made the decision look a little better than that. You know, it's all of a sudden it was 
PJ called this fourth and one because he knew he had a guy who could run 60 yards, you know, that's right. how to make this great cut. Man, that cut he made on that play, that number four is still looking for his shoes, man. Wasn't <laughs> there, cool. There's a lot of guys in college football who simply cannot tackle, and they're all over well, the place. Yeah, but this guy, Judd, this guy's problem wasn't not tackling. He never, he, he wouldn't have tackled him in flag football. The guy left him hanging there. I'm just saying, I yeah, saw quit more, sliding Mo Ibrahim. Jeff. I yeah. saw more quit casting tackles. shade. I've missed. I saw more missed tackles on both sides last night. Guys in good position at times too, and they well, just flat out miss. Part of it is you can't use your helmet. You know, for a hundred years you stuck your helmet. You know, the hit him right here, buddy. You know, put your helmet in his chest. Now, now that everybody's teaching wrap up because that's what you got to do. They, uh, the uh, by the way, the, uh, I looked at the Gopher holders. The refs uh, screwed us last night. By the way, I saw a lot of that too. I mean, I, so the the big call was the it looked like a targeting and it was, um, the game was over. At that it point. felt like the game was already decided by that point. I did not like that call, but I don't think that call swung the game by any measure. You know, PJ PJ first... PJ Fleck was. Uh, was very unhappy to say the least at that lead official. <laughs> but uh, uh, a, it was an incompletion. It was not a fumble. He didn't have the ball long enough to be a completion. Well, he so, took like three steps though, didn't he? I don't think so. Did he? Took that many? Well, anyway, I'm sure <laughs> the Big Ten is going to look at that again, and uh, and that kid will probably get suspended for next week's game with Oregon. That team will lose to Oregon. My prediction. Wow. Write that I down. I don't think they're that good. I don't think. I mean, they're they got athletes. I like the kid from uh, the number one recruit from running back, who they only gave the ball to about three times. But the, well, that that little screen pass. That five star kid who went seven. Yeah, yeah. Whoosh. Yeah, wow. yeah. That wow. that game could be sixty two, sixty one though. That that's going to be there's yeah. going to be yeah. Oregon. There's going to be no defense played. I think like so my my thought is you know Ohio State new quarterback bunch of new skill yeah. position guys new cornerbacks whatever they're going to be at their best is not going to come to fruition until like the third week in October But I look at them and I don't go you know I look at their linebackers and I don't go ugh look at that guy look at that guy you know you yeah. don't and look at their defensive backs you don't look at wow look at that guy they're not physically they're not big guys defensively. The back seven, or this, yeah, you know, th this was actually one of the rare times. This is one of the rare times where the like the Gophers' offensive line stands up next to the Ohio State defensive oh, line. It's one of the rare times in, that you don't say, "Oh my God, look how much bigger Ohio State is." Yes, you know. Oh no, this the Gopher line, and I, I, I don't know. Did the, I don't know about the defense. The defensive line was so. They did make him run stoppage enough so that the Stroud didn't really have any pressure all day when he when he went to throw. But they don't run, they don't run that kind of drop back. Whether you can tell whether there's pressure or not, but uh, I don't know. That kid, uh, I gave him a quarter and declared that he was overhyped. <laughs> Stroud. So I gave him longer yeah. than I usually give a guy. But uh, <laughs> he, he got better in the second half. But he didn't, as I said, he didn't have to make any tough throws to get three touchdowns. In the hey, game. hey. I will say this being there last night, that place was electric. If this wow. if this damn program ever got good, <laughs> that place is well, they so were much good. Fun. What do you mean they were good. they were really good two years ago? Consistently good. But, consistently but good. that's why there was people there last night because it was like the last time but people I'm saying, were there. It was if they this were... program ever had an extended period of being competitive and good consistently and went to big time ball games, that place would be fun as hell. But last night you had what? 15,000 students, uh, you know, both, or, the, or that age group. The whole section, you know, both sides up yes, and down. That's They oh, were God. all jacked up. Now when you get you got your next 11 o'clock kickoff, are they going to sleep in? And uh, the other <laughs> yeah, thing is yes. half nice. of them will have the Delta variant in three days, so we don't know when. Uh, <laughs> they're, co they're college I'm kids. Sure they won't even, was, Pat, they won't really, even know. I would have liked to bet in that crowd last night. They would have wore a mask. He would have gotten beat up. They won't even know. They'll just walk around and spread it, and nobody will know. They're college kids. Right. They're not going to give a damn. They they probably went and partied, you know, in closer quarters in a bar right after that game. Well, that's uh, I, I'm not arguing with that, but yeah, it looked like they were uh, crazier to hell. But uh, it was fun. I think Gus. My my uh, final thought. Gus did no favors to his guy Fleck last night. 
by uh, basically taunting Ohio State about how they were going to have to coach all night. When they when the Gophers went ahead, P.J. Black going to make them coach all night. Okay. Yeah, I, I like Gus. Just played the national championship game. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Also, when you when you have like fifteen or twenty four and five star recruits coming in every single year, it becomes <laughs> less about the X's and O's. It just yes. does. So. And, and by the way, you're supposed to coach all night. That's the name of the game. I didn't game. really know what it meant. That's but, not uh, special. <laughs> all right, we got to run, Pat. We'll catch you next week. And uh, now begins the Gophers' run to the you rematch guys, against Ohio State. In you guys early December. Off Labor Day, I presume. Never, never any off days for this show. Are you show. working Monday? Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. They are. I'm not actually. I, I, I chose yes. not to. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do on chain probably Tuesday. Red shirt, okay. red shirt year. All, All right. right, all right. That's uh, wrapping with Roycey here on Mackie and Judd.